So did you know that frozen shoulder is misdiagnosed in practice 50% of the time? Therefore, it is really crucial that we understand what are the key things we're looking for to diagnose this condition accurately. So that's what we're gonna go through in this video. If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So before we go any further, what is frozen shoulder? So frozen shoulder is a condition where we get specific stiffening of the shoulder joint through fibrosis of the joint capsule. Now the capsule of the shoulder surrounds the whole joint and there are a few different areas that are suggested to be most affected when it comes to frozen shoulder. The first is the subscapular recess, a specific area of the capsule between the superior and middle aspects of the joint. Next is the coracohumeral ligament, once again, which we can see over the superior shoulder capsule. And the third and final region is the rotator interval. Whilst as a medical profession we don't know exactly what causes frozen shoulder, we do know that it presents with this clear stiffening of the joint, where it can be split into two phases. The first six to nine months takes up a pain dominant phase where the key symptom that patients experience is pain, followed by a stiffness dominant phase, where the patient's pain subsides, but stiffness prevails for the next nine to 12 months ahead. Frozen shoulder can therefore be a really frustrating condition for patients because of the fact that it has such a long-term prognosis, up to 18 to 24 months of patients experiencing this lack of function due to this pain and stiffness. So with that in mind, what are the key things that we're looking out for to diagnose this condition? The first is age. Frozen shoulder specifically presents in patients between the ages of around 40 to 60 years of age with a peak onset of 50 years of age. In fact, in Japanese, frozen shoulder literally translates as a 50-year-old shoulder because the age of the condition is so specific to when it presents. So if you have a patient who's 30 years old or 75 years old, where the thinking might be, do they have frozen shoulder? The chances are they don't because their age does not correspond with the normal age bracket that frozen shoulder presents in. Next, as we said, the key symptom that patients will present with alongside pain is stiffness. And as a result, we're looking for movement restrictions in our patient's assessment. So therefore, we will need to assess passive range of movement and active range of movement for our patients affected and unaffected shoulder. What are we looking for? We're looking for an equal restriction in both active range of movement and passive range of movement tests because it's the joint as a whole which is experiencing that stiffness rather than a specific contractile structure like a muscle. Now for frozen shoulder specifically, the key movement restriction we're looking for is a lack of external rotation. The capsular pattern for the shoulder is external rotation, abduction, internal rotation. That means that the first movement we're expecting to suffer is external rotation. And in fact, for patients with frozen shoulder, we're looking for a 50% or more reduction in the external rotation of the affected side compared to the unaffected side. In terms of pain, we commonly find that patients present with pain around the lateral humerus, particularly around the deltoid tuberosity where the deltoid muscle inserts into. Also look out for patients experiencing lots of pain at night, particularly when they lie on that shoulder because it compresses that capsule and can irritate it further. Now, does your patient need an x-ray? This is a point of controversy with some clinicians saying that they do and some clinicians saying they don't. The reason for it is that there are lots of other conditions that can present as a stiff shoulder, such as osteoarthritis of the shoulder, a tumor or an osteosarcoma, avascular necrosis, or a locked posterior dislocation. Therefore, Lots of services suggest that an x-ray needs to be given to the patient of their shoulder and for that x-ray to confirm there's no other abnormalities that might be causing that stiffness in order to truly confirm the diagnosis of frozen shoulder. Finally, it's worth considering risk factors for frozen shoulder. We find that there's a high prevalence of this condition for patients who are diabetic and those who have thyroid issues, as well as those who present with a more sedentary lifestyle. So look out for all of these things when you're considering the whole picture for your patient. So guys, I really hope this has helped you with your diagnosis tips for frozen shoulder. If it has, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads of brilliant resources for physiotherapists on our Instagram channel, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.
here on Clinical Physio.